Hi, I'm Elizabeth Dellery, and I am an assistant professor of microbiology and immunology here at Marion University College of Osteopathic Medicine. I have my PhD in biomedical sciences and a concentration in microbiology and immunology. So like my shirt says, vaccinated, as of Friday, I have received my second dose of the COVID vaccine and due to what I teach here at Marion and due to my background in research, I wanted to come to talk to you guys today about the vaccine, you know, things about it, uh, background research, things like that, as well as alleviate some of your fears and concerns about getting the vaccine. The best way for us to return to normal and for you guys to be able to see my lovely face without a mask in class would be if we all get the vaccine. So here are your most asked vaccine questions. So the COVID vaccines in particular, we've got two different kinds that we're using right now. We have our mRNA vaccines, which are your Pfizer and Moderna, and then you have your DNA vaccine, which is your Johnson & Johnson. Now Pfizer and Moderna work by basically taking mRNA, which is basically just instructions for making a protein. And the protein in this case is the spike protein that COVID uses to infect and spread throughout your body. So we add the mRNA of that spike protein covered in a little fat bubble so your cells absorb it, inject it into your arm. Your cells take this material, make that spike protein and present it on the surface. Your immune system then comes in and notices that, hey, this is kind of foreign, you know, this doesn't belong here, and makes antibodies towards it. Now these antibodies are what are gonna protect you in the future from contracting um, COVID and SARS-CoV-2 virus. The DNA vaccine is kind of similar, except they take the DNA for that spike protein and they add it to an adenovirus, which is a common cold virus, uh, but they've made it non-infectious so that it can't replicate in your body. Same concept, it adds the instructions to make this spike protein and your body creates antibodies to it. That way, if it ever sees the spike protein again, you've got that immune response ready to fight off uh, COVID and uh, subsequent infections. No, it cannot. The central dogma of molecular biology is that it goes from DNA to RNA to protein. And so by injecting just the mRNA, it will not affect or alter your DNA. Yes, uh, for any drug to be on the market with the FDA, the FDA goes through an extensive review process and all drugs and vaccines have to go multiple phases of testing. Um, this, all three vaccines have gone through extensive phase three testing, which covers you know, side effects, um, you know, any fatalities, things like that, and thankfully they are all safe. And as of yesterday, 63 million people in the United States have received both doses of either the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine, and they've had at least 108 million other people have received at least one dose. Um, so you guys know right now they've been very well tested and they are very safe. Um, so I can't actually tell you specifically what to expect because my favorite fun fact about immunology is that no one in the world has the exact same immune systems, not even identical twins. So it's pretty difficult to predict how you might react to the vaccine. You know, for the most part, it is very well tolerated amongst most of the community. Um, you know, the, the most uh, frequent side effects reported obviously are injection site soreness because you did have a needle injected into your muscle. Um, there's also, you know, fatigue and headache, which is basically my favorite thing too. Uh, I love it when I get side effects because what you think of as being side effects is really your immune system working. It's signs that your immune system is doing its job. Like when you get sick and you get a fever, you know, that's not the virus or the bacteria. That's your immune system raising your temperature to fight off and kill that virus or bacteria making you sick because it loves you and it wants to protect you and keep you safe. Um, so, you know, if you do get side effects, just know that this is normal. This is what your body does to fight off infection and it's doing its job and it's working. There is a tiny difference in efficacy between both the two-shot mRNA vaccines, Pfizer and Moderna, and the one-shot Johnson & Johnson. Um, they're all still very safe. They all still protect against very serious infection and death, uh, and risk of side effects are 50 out of every 1 million doses, if that. Um, meanwhile, death from COVID is about 1,700 deaths uh, per 1 million infection, so um, it is important to get that vaccine. The vaccine does not affect fertility or, or birth control. There was kind of a misinformation campaign going around at the very beginning that said, you know, that it affected 
you have a placental protein, which is not true at all. Uh, you are very safe. You will still be able to have children in the future. It will not affect your fertility. COVID, on the other hand, if you contract the virus, some early preliminary studies are showing that it could potentially affect fertility in men. Um, so the best way to prevent getting the virus is by getting the vaccine. The CDC recommends that yes, if you have had COVID before, you still need to get the vaccine. And this is because antibodies from naturally acquired COVID infections don't seem to last as long as those created from vaccination. Um, naturally acquired only lasts about three months while we're seeing like six months or longer protection from these vaccinations. We can't really say that for sure now. Uh, as of right now, all of the strains that we found are pretty covered by vaccines we have available. Um, but the longer it takes us to reach that 70% herd immunity from vaccinations, uh, the greater risk we run that more mutations will occur that potentially may be you know, ineffective with the current vaccinations. Uh, so we might need a booster shot down the line, but as of right now, uh, we seem to be pretty protected um, from the vaccine. It's very important that we all get vaccinated. Uh, it is a very well tolerated vaccine, all three of them. Uh, we've got 63 million people have been fully vaccinated against COVID and 108 million people have at least received their first dose. Um, and it's still, again, been very well tolerated, you know, very minimal side effects with just like injection site soreness and headache and fatigue and things like that that clear up very easily. It's very important for us to get vaccinated though because, you know, I know we feel young and invincible and that nothing can take us down. Uh, and yeah, you might survive COVID with very minimal side effects, but this vaccine is not just to protect you, it's to protect your loved ones, the community, your faculty and friends at Marion, who you don't know if they've got any risks or conditions that might make them more susceptible to serious illness and death from COVID. Well, the good news is, and thankfully, both the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines were not produced with abortal fetal tissue cell lines. So you can, in good conscience, get both of those vaccines and still be pro-life. It is important to know that as we are you know, pro-life individuals, it is important to take care of all walks of life too. And vaccination is the best way that we can protect ourselves, our friends and loved ones, the elderly, immunocompromised, and everyone else in our community. So Johnson & Johnson was produced with those cell lines. However, the Catholic Church has come out and said that due to you know, the widespread severity of this pandemic and how many lives are currently being lost all over the world from it, you know, that in this specific situation and circumstances, it is okay to get that vaccination. You know, if you do have a choice and the option, you know, that's one of your biggest concerns. You know, Pfizer and Moderna will probably be your best bet. Uh, but again, the Catholic Church did say that all free vaccines are you know, good and useful in terms of this massive global pandemic. So thank you guys so much for joining me today as we talked about your most asked COVID vaccine questions. You know, I'm around campus, I'm in Evans Center, if you ever want to stop by and ask questions, or you can reach out with my contact information, which is linked in the video below.